Okay, uh, my name is Caitlin Kalusia. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm a project manager, social media consultant at Shipple. This is the Intro to WordPress webinar. This is the first Intro to WordPress webinar we've actually done. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to shout them out. If I'm going too fast or too slow, you know, let me know. We've got a, a kind of a lot to go over, so I'm going to try to um, hit the most important pieces of, of each uh, piece of WordPress. So, let's get started. Okay, so this is my WordPress not for the faint of heart slide. Um, if you Google WordPress tattoos, you'll actually find a lot of different things, which is interesting and kind of speaks to how much people love WordPress. I, I It's kind of much for me, but that this was a funny picture. Okay, so what we'll go over today. Um, what is WordPress? How do I use WordPress? Um, specifically, how to create and publish blog posts and pages. How to find and add plugins. We'll talk more about the, the plugin structure of WordPress. Um, how to manage themes, which are how WordPress control the look and feel, and sometimes even uh, some of the features. And then how to add and modify users. And then after we talk through all that stuff, that'll be the kind of meat and potatoes of it. We'll talk through. Uh, maintaining a WordPress site or blog and what to make sure you do after launch. So first, uh, why? Why WordPress? What's all the hype about? Um, WordPress, this is from, these quotes are from a blog post that I was, I've been reading a lot about WordPress in the last uh, couple of weeks preparing for this presentation. Um, as far as usability, WordPress thinks like a writer, WordPress thinks like a designer. And so, um, WordPress is made to be as usable as possible. Um, the, the web standards it uses are uh, extremely high. It makes sure to follow, uh, do things the way that, that people on the web expect, both people who are adding content and reading the content. Um, it's open source, which means that anybody can add to it. Anybody can add uh, additional features. Um, they can use it basically any way that they want to. It also means that the actual program itself is free. And because of that, there's a huge community of support. And so uh, we'll talk about plugins in a few minutes. And plugins are things that are beyond the, the default, beyond the, uh, the basic functionality that uh, anybody can create a plugin to work with WordPress. So things like uh, um, certain, if for instance, there are certain roles that are in place for users, and if you want to do something more specific, and you want to say, you know, I want to make it, I want to make my own role that can do, you know, very specific things on the site. There are plugins that you can install that will allow you to have that kind of uh, control. So, who uses WordPress? Big guys. Mashable. Mashable is one of the, the biggest read uh, blogs out there. They're on WordPress. Uh, really big guys, the Wall Street Journal magazine, uh, they're using WordPress. Uh, there are some sites like this uh, Queens College example, they're using it for the CMS capability. So they're using WordPress to manage their pages uh, just as much as, as posts. And then that last group, Shipalite, those are, that's a collection of screenshots of blogs of a whole bunch of people who work at Shipple. Mine is the bottom left with the, the little Twitter bird and the swirlies. Uh, I, I use WordPress for my personal blog, use it for the triple blog. I've uh, been blogging for a really long time. Um, I've done, worked with a lot of corporate blogs in my personal blog. I've used um, TypePad and Movable Type and you know, Zanga and I've used um, uh, Drupal and some other things. And for me, I think WordPress is the, the easiest to use in blogging. It's the most intuitive. Um, it kind of has a pattern, it does, does most things the same way, and so that's why I'm a big fan. Okay, so next we'll talk through how, oh, sorry, um, you can't hear me very well. Is it going to speak up? If I talk louder, is that is that better? Does that sound good? You sound good, Caitlin. Okay, I'll try to speak up. I uh, Hopefully, that will that'll make me clearer. I'm using a headset that I don't use all the time, so apologies if I'm not super clear. Um, okay, so how do I use WordPress? 
essentially the no matter what your website is, no matter you know who you are using WordPress, your the way to log in is to start with your domain and then add slash wp dash admin. So even if you don't host your own blog, you can register for a free blog, free blog at WordPress.com, and then your domain will be whatever your username is .wordpress.com. And you'll still go to that slash wp admin. So we're going to do that on our training blog. This is our Texas Dog Walkers Association training blog. So we're at slash, well, we'll go there. We'll start there. Slash WP admin it takes us to this page. We're going to log in. And then this is what we call the dashboard. So from the dashboard, um, you'll see at a glance how many posts are there, how many pages, categories, um, recent comments. We've got this thing called Quick Press, which is essentially a, you can write a blog post straight from here and either save it as a draft or publish it. Um, I use this, I use this for drafts. Typically, I don't really like to publish from this little interface. Um, so what I'll do is if I, you know, thought of something and I want to write it down really fast, I'll write in the content, you know, write a blog post about XYZ and save it as a draft. You can also see your recent drafts, things from the WordPress development blog. Um, some of these are security updates, which are really important. Um, and then we've got plugins and other WordPress news. You can also drag these things around and put them in whatever order you want to. I'm just dragging and dropping um, all around. You can also turn them off up here, kind of small. There's this little button called screen options. And if I click that, it pops out all these things. So, you know, maybe one of these, this is from um, some extra, you know, maybe I don't want to hear about other WordPress news. And so I'll uncheck that. And you can see they're, they're disappearing and, and reappearing as I check them. And then you can also change the number of columns that things are organized into. So you have full control over what you want to see when you log in. So kind of what we're going to go over today is we're going to go over this um, sidebar right here, this left sidebar, and um, start at the top and work our way down. Um, I will tell you that posting is about half of this presentation. Um, it's posting of the meat and potatoes of WordPress. It's, uh, like I mentioned before, um, the, the way that you, the workflow in WordPress is pretty similar throughout different, you know, whether you're adding a post or a page or a user. So um, we'll start with posts and uh, work our way down. Um, any questions on so far? Okay. I'm going to go back to the slides, make sure I don't leave anything out. So here's my error. This is what we're going to do. Um, okay. So in the post section, we have a couple of options. We can edit, which will let us view all the posts and drafts. We can add a new post. Uh, we can edit the post tags and the post categories. So this is my super, super simplified how to create a blog post. These are literally the buttons that you have to press, what you have to include to make a blog post. Uh, click Posts on the left side, click Add New, enter Title, Body, Category, Tags, and hit Publish. So that's easy. We're going to go through some of the nuances of it because, as you probably guessed, it's a, it's a little more complicated than that. So I'm going to switch back over to the blog. Okay, so I hit Posts. And here you see these are all the posts that we have um, available. You can see this is something that you'll see throughout WordPress as I mouse over. I have more options. Uh, quick edit is going to open up a little, a little bit of information. I can edit essentially everything but the post itself. I can change the categories and tags and all those things. Um, in here, we've got what category it's in, who wrote it, any, uh, any comments are going to be shown down here. So we're going to go ahead and add a new one. Add new. So uh, the four the four steps are title, body, categories, and tags. So we'll start with the title. Press post, and you'll see once I clicked off of that, it added this permalink guy down here. And a permalink is essentially this is the URL of what people are going to type in to get to this post. And so you can see, you know, this is our domain slash test post. I can edit that. So I can make it whatever I want to. So we're actually, test post is kind of vague. We're going to call this um, my favorite cat. 
And then when I click off of it, it's not going to change. It only auto creates it the first time. So be sure if you're going through, like for me, for instance, I think of the title last. Usually I'll just type something up there and then type my whole post and edit the title again at the very end. So if you're, if you're like that, if you're like me, then be sure to update this, this uh, URL as well. Okay, so next we're in the body. Now you'll see that this is what we call a, a WYSIWYG, a what you see is what you get editor. It looks a lot like uh, Word, it looks a lot like other programs that you might have used. You've got bold, italic, strike through, pretty basic stuff. Um, the one thing I am going to show you is at the end here, there's the show, hide, kitchen sink. And kitchen sink is the, the all the buttons that you could possibly ever see. So if I click on that guy, I've got more buttons that appear. So you may not need to use that. Um, I typically leave it turned off unless I, you know, how do I indent? I don't remember, and then I'll try there. Um, we're, we've also got an HTML view. So we can flip over to the HTML view, and you can see that we've got some tags up here. It's, it's a little, um, if you're not into HTML, that's fine. You don't have to. You can, you can stick with the visual editor, but that's there as an option. So we're going to throw some. test copy in there. Okay, so here's our lorem ipsum fake text to put in there. We'll bold some words. I'm just highlighting and clicking. We'll italicize some things. Um, this guy is called, this is block quote. Essentially what this does is it indents it and um, this is good for if you're quoting someone You've got kind of a lot, you know, you're, you're quoting a paragraph for someone. So uh, that's text. The next thing we're going to do is go into adding an image. So I'm going to stick my cursor at the beginning of this paragraph, and I'm going to click up here, Upload Insert, and we've got uh, media. You have a whole bunch of different buttons for, you know, audio specifically, different uh, videos. We're going to add images. Hit Browse. Fine. All of my test pictures are of adorable animals, so lucky you. Okay, here's my panda picture. Um, when you upload an image, make sure to include uh, this title right here. This is going to be the alternate text where if somebody um, is, they're not showing images, if, for instance, they're on a mobile phone or Google, as, as you probably know, Google can't read images, and so this is what those people are going to see if the image doesn't display. So we'll call this Panda Party. And that's the title. And then you can give it a description. You can give it a caption. The way, if they're, well, I'll show you what the caption looks like. This is determined by the theme. So um, by default, it's going to have a little blue box around it with the captions. I'll show you what that looks like. A link URL by default is going to link to the actual image, so you can see this crazy number .jpg. Um, I don't want this to link anywhere, so I'm going to click none and it'll go away. We can left align, center align, right align. There are uh, different sizes by default that we can have. Uh, thumbnail, which is going to be a square, it's going to look exactly like this. It may crop off some of the image. Medium is 300 pixels wide. Full, well, large is 500 wide, but because the full size is that size, then we don't have an option to do that. We can also edit these. So if, for instance, like my personal blog is only about 500, 550 pixels wide, and so I would never, if, for instance, it was only 400, I may want to change the, the large size to be, to be as wide as it could go, so I wouldn't accidentally, you know, in, insert an image that was too big. So we're going to insert this guy. Here he is. We made him left aligned. So you can see, I think um, this image is kind of big. So we're going to we're going to drag it down. If you drag it, it's going to stay. It's going to keep the proportion. You can see our little caption here, how it how it handled that. We're going to make him even smaller. Some other things you can do with pictures are once you've inserted it, when I click on it, you'll see this little mountain guy and the little next guy. If I click the mountain guy, then I have some more options. Um, if I click on advanced settings, I've got, I can edit my alternate text. 
I can uh, update the size. I can make, go back to the original size by clicking this. I can add a border around it. If I just do one, it'll add a one pixel black border. Um, and you can see it's changing dynamically up here in the top as I, as I do these things. Um, I can give it some spacing around it so it doesn't you know, hit up too close to the text. Then I'll hit update and you can see it kind of moved based on that. So that's a picture. Any questions on that so far? We good? Okay. Cool. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is insert a video. So um, and when I say insert a video, I mean we're going to embed a video from another source. This may be for uh, a lot of us, this is the only time for me, especially this is the only time that I actually use the HTML editor. For the rest of the time, I use the visual editor. So uh, this video is, I mean, uh, this post is about my cat because I'm, I really like my cats. And <laughs> so I'm going to find this video. This is Vimeo. Vimeo is a lot like YouTube, except that it gives you a little bit more flexibility. It, um, instead of, uh, YouTube will decrease the quality of your video so that they're actually a smaller file size, and Vimeo won't do that. Vimeo supports HD uploads. With Vimeo, uh, you're not limited to 10 minutes. They're really professional quality clipping videos. I'm, I'm a really big fan of them. You even have um, a lot of control over when you embed it into your blog post exactly what you want it to look like. So this is a video of, of our my cat, <laughs> and I'm going to embed it into the, into the post. So I clicked embed, and I've got this code. And if I embed it like that, it's going to with that code, it's going to look like this. I can click customize size and color, and I can make it you know smaller. I can make it. I can change the color. I can make it pink. I can take away the title. I can take away my name, and hide this text. So I've customized that. I'm just going to copy this code and then next and go over here and in the HTML I'm going to go down. I like to put them at the bottom if I, if I embed a video just so that I know. I'll just, you know, put a bunch of spaces so that I know it's separate from the content so I know I'm not going to mess it up. And then click back to visual and you'll see this box here. So this is my video. So then I can drag it around and I want it at the top. So I'm going to drag it all the way up to the top. Put it right there. I can even, you know, center it and do things with it. Okay, so that's how I've embedded my video. Um, if you're using a YouTube video, you're going to see a little uh, embed piece of code on the right. It will say embed. Um, I've actually got that in the presentation, so I'll show you what that looks like. So now we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and save a draft and not publish. In WordPress, you've got a couple of options. You can save a draft and, and or publish right away, or if you want to schedule a post to be published. And this is something that a lot of clients use for corporate blogs. If um, you know people get really busy, and maybe you, you take one afternoon and you block off your schedule and you write five blog posts and you schedule them to go live, you know, every Monday for the next five weeks instead of all at once. So if, it says publish immediately now. If I hit edit. I'm going to make it publish in, we'll do in three minutes. And hit OK. And then my little button is going to change from publish to schedule. And then I would hit schedule to uh, publish it. But, um, oh, we skipped categories and tags. I'm sorry. <laughs> so WordPress organizes blogs by categories and by tags. Categories are the main way that all your content is organized on the site. You should typically keep your categories five to seven. Um, it's hard. It's in my experience once you get over seven categories, it's sort of sensory overload, and um, so keeping your categories down is good. We'll, we'll discuss cats. You can put things in multiple categories. Um, it's good to keep your categories fairly discreet so that if somebody wants to see everything about one topic, they're not they're not um, they can see the content based on the way you've categorized it, instead of seeing everything for every category. Um, you can add a new category right here. You can look at most used. Um, so that's categories. Tags are a slightly looser way to organize content. You're not limited on the number of tags. 
They can be whatever you want to. We're going to tag this. Well, we'll tag it kitten video and then trick. So um, WordPress, we don't have a lot of tags in here yet because it's a, it's a training blog that we don't use a ton, but um, it's smart enough where, say, I typed kitten, but somebody else may have typed kittens, plural. Um, if I start to type a tag, it will try to autocorrect me, and it will tell me what other people have used. So that's kind of its way of making sure that you're not overwriting each other. And You know, you have five blogs tagged with the singular and five blogs tagged with the or post tag with the plural, and um, keeps everything kind of discreet. So we're going to schedule this guy. Let's schedule. And you can see it reloaded, and we've got this little yellow bar up here. And then we can click to view our post. So here's our post. We've got our picture, and you can see the caption, we've got our video, um, if we scroll down, we can see it's filed under cats, that's our category. This, All this is part of the theme, which we'll talk about in a second, um, whether or not any of this shows at the bottom, and see how we've got the tags shown right here. So that's publishing a post. Any, any questions so far? Oh, tags are similar to keywords. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, and a lot of times we recommend that clients use keywords in their tagging because uh, Google likes tags and they show up down, you know, on the post. And um, yeah, tags tags are very similar to keywords. And you don't want like with um, when you're using keywords, you don't want to go crazy and add a million tags to each post, but you but you can add several to each post. That's an awesome question. Okay, I'm gonna flip. Flip back over to my PowerPoint and make sure I didn't leave anything out. This is kind of what I do. I make a PowerPoint and then I ignore it and go back and make sure I did everything. Okay, so title, content. Uh, we talked about the we talked about the permalinks. Um, when you very first start a blog, it's going to look like this guy of this top screenshot here, and it's going to ask you to change permalinks. By default, you'll get P, which stands for post equals, and then whatever number it is. And it will, it will ask you to change it. Uh, for SEO, I would change it to something that has a word in it. So when you hit change permalinks, it will take you to these settings. And by default, you'll get a number. You can do uh, year, month, day, name of the post, or just year, month, name of the post, or um, numeric. Or you can do a custom structure. So I would pick one of these middle guys just so that you've got the name of the post in there somewhere. So that, because uh, Google likes keywords in the URL. So that's that. Here's our here's our WYSIWYG editor, and here's a, just a breakdown of what each of the buttons are. Um, inserting an image, we went through this, title, caption, description, link, and size. And then this is once you've edited, once you put a, an image into a post, you can hover over it and see our little, our little picture here and click and see advanced settings. So here's just a little bit about the advanced settings. Here's how to embed a, a video. This is what it looks like on YouTube. I mentioned this before. It's got this embed code down here. And I think if you just click this little gear guy, it will automatically copy the whole thing for you. Um, you'll see that a lot of places um, on videos. You'll see it on, if you use Flickr, Flickr badges or, or Facebook badges, you'll see an, an embed code. And anytime you see embed code, that means that you can paste it in the HTML view of a post and it will, it will show up. I've also got a link to a help file on this, so if you uh, need to do it later and you don't remember what steps we took, you can visit there. So here are our categories. Pick one, tag separate with a comma. Um, this says three to five tags. Uh, wh whatever, it's up to you on that one. Um, I wouldn't do more than, again, seven is kind of the magic number, the, the number of things that, that people's brains can hold at once. So that's my favorite rule of thumb. Uh, publishing, you can save it as a draft, and WordPress will, will not publish it, or you can publish and either publish right away or schedule. We went through categories, keep it to five to seven, keep your categories discreet. Um, tags are not required, but they're, they're a great way to organize information to include keywords in your tags, all those, all those good things. The other thing in the posts tab uh, from the dashboard is you can actually organize your categories and tags. So we'll take a look at that. 
flip back to our blog. We're going to go back to slash WP admin. And under posts, it's going to pop out our little menu. We've got tags. We'll start with tags. So tags, popular tags, these are the three tags that we've used so far. You can also see them down here. It's got the, it's similar to what we saw in the post, if you hover, there's some extra stuff you can do, edit, quick edit, delete. You can also see which posts are actually tagged with that. So that, that's helpful. If you want to add a new one, you can add it in here. Like I mentioned before, um, if you start to tag something, it will try to autocorrect you and tell you what other people have used before. So if you are starting a new blog and you want to set it up so that it, you know, say you've already made the decision that you want to use training instead of um, training video, um, then you can set that up in here and add a new tag and it will try to it'll auto correct with the tag that you set up. Categories is, is really similar. We've got the list. Right now, announcements and news is the default category, so we can't delete it. You can see that we can delete all the other ones, but when I mouse over this guy, I don't have an option to delete it. Uh, you update that in the settings, and we'll go over that in a, in a few minutes where that happens. But that's why this guy, you can't delete. You can also see how many posts are in each of the categories, add a new category. Um, this is pretty, pretty straightforward um, on this. So here's how to delete and uncategorize. The uncategorized category, by default, your blog's going to have uncategorized as one of the cat as the only category and so uh, changing it in the settings and then uh, adding more categories changing it in the settings and then deleting it this, this shows you how to do that okay so I mentioned that that part was about half the presentation so hopefully um, that made sense if anyone has any questions shout them out um, and we'll we'll move on I think going over spending some time going over that makes the rest of it make a little bit more sense so the next thing on the, the dashboard are, uh, is media. This is your media library. So we click media, we're going to get all of the images and other types of files that have been uploaded to, to the site at all. And so uh, this guy, you'll see this red panda, he's attached to I Love Red Pandas, which is a blog post. So if you upload an image similar to the way we did it just a minute ago where we were in a blog post and we uploaded an image, then it will be attached to that blog post. If you upload an image in the media library, it will not be attached to anything. So you can see this guy is not attached to anything. So um, this is helpful for um, if somebody, you know, if you need to upload an image, it's not necessarily going to go on a blog post. Maybe it's going to go on the sidebar. Maybe it's going to go, you know, you need to email somebody a link. You can, you can use this media library however you, however you want to. So I'll flip over and show you what that looks like. We hit media. We've got all, so this one's an MP3. You can see it's all kinds of media that, and it tells you date, it tells you who uploaded it. I can, you know, again, when I mouse over, I can edit, delete, and view. Or add new. So that's the media library. Next are links. Links are attached to a blog roll. If you have a blog roll, not all blogs um, have a blog roll, but uh, most do. Well, these screenshots are really small, so I'm going to show you in the actual site. Okay, so I'm going to click links. We've got, similar to what we've seen before, the list of all of them, the, uh, the link title, the URL where it goes to, what category it's in, whether or not it's visible. To add new, we click add new. And actually, I'm going to open the site itself in a different window and show you what it's going to do. So down here, here's our dog workers blog. It's uh, after the three minutes in the future that we set to publish this blog post, so the, the post is live now. Um, on our blog roll, we've got our links, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a new one. So we're going to call this shipple.com. We're going to make the web address shipple.com. Uh, don't forget the HTTP colon slash slash. If you don't include that, it won't work, so make sure. Um, we have the option to keep this link private. That will make it kind of admin only. So if you wanted to, say, set up a whole bunch of links and make them all go live at the same time, you could uh, keep it private until, until you are ready. Um, description, this is going to be the alternate text when somebody mouses over the, the link itself. So 
will say the official school website. And right now we only have one category, which is blog roll. Uh, some sites use different categories, and I'll show you an example of that on the speaking of the Shipple blog. So on the Shipple blog, on this right sidebar that's going to pop up, here it goes. Okay, we've got Shipple links and Shipple blogs, and these are both these for each category of links. So what we've done is we've pulled out the official Shipple links and put them in one list. And then we've got each of our, some of our employees who are blogging, if you need the bottom, it's in alphabetical order, not in order of who you like the most, I promise. Um, we've got uh, it pulled out so that the Shipple things are on top and they're, you know, they're, they're more important so they're up at the top and then Shipple at blogs are, are next on the list all grouped together so it's not confusing. So that's an example of how you can use categories of blogs. A lot of people don't, they just have one blog role and that's up to you. So this target blank, this it seems this is very important if you're opening um, if you're opening a link that's not on your site. Typically, we recommend you have it open in a new window so that people uh, don't leave your site. So that they, um, you know, if they're going somewhere else, they know clearly that they're going somewhere else. So again, that's that's an option. I would recommend leaving it on. These things you can do all kinds of crazy things with the link relationship. Um, I don't touch this typically. I'll just use the basics and then add the link. So now when we reload the page, our shipple.com link is in here. And these are in alphabetical order. Um, you can reorder them based on the, let me go back to edit. If you saw when we were in there, there were some options on the bottom for rating and you can put them in order by rating and then it will put them in um, not alphabetical order. So that's links. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, if there are any questions, like I said, shout them out. So here's our link categories. This is what I talked about a second ago. Shipple links being kept separate from blog, uh, Shipple blog links. So the next thing we're going to talk about is pages. I mentioned before that some sites use WordPress as a, what's called a CMS content management system. So they'll use just pages and they won't really focus on the blogging piece of it. Um, yeah, that's, that's an option. Posts work a lot like pages do. Uh, pages, the big difference is that it lives outside the chronology. So it doesn't, that means it doesn't have a time. It wasn't, um, it's not put like a blog post that were, they're put in order and they kind of roll off the home page. Pages are more static than that. So to add a page, we go to the pages tab, which looks a lot like the posts tab and I'm going to flip over and go to pages. So here we've only got one. By default you're going to get an about page. It's always a good idea to have, even if you don't have an about page, to have an about border somewhere on the site just so people are super clear where they are. Um, we're going to click edit and edit this guy. You'll see that this looks pretty familiar. Um, it's got the same WYSIWYG, the same media options, the same permalink, um, the same, so this one's already published, so we've got an update page. If it wasn't, we would see published, just like on a post. Um, we've got some different attributes. Instead of categories and tags, we have things like order, and um, if you want to put a different template on this page, which typically you won't, but you have the option. Um, you can change the author. Uh, under discussion, you can allow comments or not. So a lot of times on pages, you know, you, you wouldn't allow comments because more, like I said, it's more of a static page, but maybe you have a page called, um, you know, the submit your ideas for the conference that we're having. We want you to, to comment on this page and tell us what you think they need to do, something like that. So pages are really similar to posts, except like I said, they, they live outside of the chronology. They're there all the time, um, no matter what. So that's pages. Next we'll talk about comments. I didn't have something funny to say for this, just item number five on the list. It means we're halfway through. Um, here's a, kind of a lot about comments, but I, I think all of this is really important. Um, by default, so comment moderation is one of the biggest questions that we get asked. You know, how does it work? What kind of options do I have in WordPress? By default, WordPress is smart enough to mark comments that it absolutely knows are spam as spam. 
they're never going to publish, they're never going to show up on your site, they're curse words and weird links and, you know, win a free iPod, none of that's ever going to show up. Um, and then the other thing it will do is it will hold suspect comments for moderation and it will email you and say, you know, such and such comment has been held for moderation, you need to manually moderate it. It knows, it thinks it might be spam, but it's not, it wants a person to read it and tell, you know, the context. Um, if you've got optional additional comment moderation settings, you can set it so that each one has to be manually approved. Some people, if you are uh, in certain industries, that's something that, that people really want everything to be manually approved. The downside of that is you have to be watching it. So if, you know, if it's a corporate blog and somebody comments at midnight on a Saturday night, you don't see it till you know, Monday morning when you get to your desk, sometimes people get frustrated if they're their comments don't get moderated quickly, especially if they're saying nice things about you. So uh, you kind of have that's kind of a commitment to make sure if you're going to choose that option. It's definitely a it's a viable option for a lot of people. It just depends, but it takes some commitment. Um, the other another option is user has to have a previously approved comment. So um, for WordPress, you have to enter in your name and your email address. So if it sees you know Caitlin. You know, see collusion at shipple.com. It says, I've seen that before. I know that person's okay. Then they automatically go. Um, you can view all the comments, reply to comments, moderate comments from the window. There are additional plugins like Intense Debate. We use Intense Debate. It adds more features to comments. And I'll show you what, well, first I'll show you what it looks like by default, and then I'll show you what it looks like with uh, something like Intense Debate installed. So comments, here we go. Similar to what we've seen before. You mouse over, you see some extra stuff. We have even more than usual. You can unapprove, mark something as spam, or delete it, and then the edit, quick edit, and reply. So I can reply to this comment. What it's going to do is it's going to show it um, next in line on that post. It's, it came from Mr. WordPress. This is his URL that he entered. Um, so on the actual page, we'll go to the page. So as I, oops, actually. I'm going to open it in a new window so I can show you. I'm logged in right now, and so because I'm logged in, it's not prompting me for any information because it says it already knows who I am. So here I'm going to open this in Internet Explorer where I'm not logged in, and so I've got this name, email, and website. So by default, this is what's going to show. You can add extra stuff if you want to, um, but typically this is keep it simple. Let them add their website if they want to. And then the mail is not published. So if you've got a blog that uses intense debate, like the Shipple blog, which is going to take just a second to load. We're going to go to the comments section. It looks a little bit different. Um, it's going to prompt you to use your intense debate login, which is a separate login from WordPress, and that's optional. You can if you have one. If you, if you don't, it's not. It's, it's fine. You can still um, comment. So you can see, like here, this is me logged in with my Intense Debate login, so it's, I've got some extra stuff that I can do. It's going to load my avatar, which is what it's turning into right now. Okay, so here's my little my avatar and my bio, my latest Twitter, my blog. You can view my separate Intense Debate profile. Um, because I'm logged in, I can um, Let's see, I, I like what Katie had to say. I can thumbs up. Oh, I, I guess I'm not logged in right now. Um, if I logged in. Then, let's scroll back down to the bottom. Then I can thumbs up Katie's comment, and she'll get a plus two that um, somebody liked her comment. So this is good for if you... Um, Oh, um, let's see. It does not store it in a separate file. Oh, so the question is, um, does does it store the information of who's commented in a separate contact file? And what it does is it will show you. Let me show you one that has got some more comments for the test blog. It will show you who is commenting. And it will show you where they're where they're coming from. So here's the Shipple blog. We have a lot of comments. Once 
Moving along in my intense debate. It's not something, it doesn't generate like a list that you can export, but it's got, um, like if we go to approved comments, we can see, these are spam, where are the real ones? We can see, well these are spam, but um, let's clear out the spam. Um, Intense debate works a little bit differently. It kind of takes over this interface, and so it looks it looks a little different. Let me try another example so that you can see it. Like I said, there there's several WordPress blogs in my life that I can <laughs> show you, but this is my personal blog. Once it logs me in, it's thinking really hard. What it's going to do is it's going to show the name of the person, their email address, their URL, and their IP address. So if, um, so for instance, if, if you have somebody who's you know spamming your blog on and they're using the same IP address but maybe a different name each time, you can block them by their IP address. Um, the email address you've got, I don't know, I can actually, let me, let me, this is taking a second. So I will, um, I'll look and see if maybe there's a plugin or something that you can, you can do that. And I'll, I'll shoot everybody an email when I send out these um, slides so that, you know, because this is, it's taking its sweet time to <laughs> figure it out. So I'll, I'll look into that and I'll, I'll let you know um, for sure on that. Um, but you can kind of see how this one works, how it's got a name and it, and it's, this is the default one and so it doesn't have the, the extra stuff like the email address on there. But I'll look and see what kind of um, export options that we have for that. Um, so that's commenting. We talked about mousing over a comment. Um, the next thing is appearance and this is, so I've been talking about themes. Uh, themes are how WordPress separates the style from, of the site from the content of the site. So the theme is a skin, sort of. It controls the look and the presentation of the content. You can update your theme and it won't mess with any of your content. You can, uh, uh, those things are kept completely separate in WordPress. So themes are really customizable. There are tons of them out there in the world. Uh, I've got some examples. So these are both personal blogs. This is my blog and this is uh, David, our creative director's blog. So I want to show you these because there are a lot of differences. So mine is pretty simple. I am um, got it for free. I'm not a, I'm not a, I can't code <laughs> at all. And so this is like a very plug and play for me. So I've got my list of pages up here. I've got my latest post. It's showing the entire post. And I have two sidebars because I have a lot of stuff that I want to show. So I've got Flickr pictures and Vimeo videos and my Twitter feeding in and categories and it says I'm going to ShippleCon and all these things that I want to show on the sidebar. So I, I like to have two just because I'm, you know, pack rat and I want to show everything. So David's is a little simpler than mine. He's got one sidebar. He's got his little about blurb and then recent posts uh, that's feeding in his Twitter as well. And then instead of showing his entire post, he's just showing the excerpt. He's showing the blurb of each one, which is probably the first, you know, 300, 400 characters. So that that way you can see more kind of what it's about and then click through if you want to. For mine, I'm just showing you the latest. So that's sort of an example of, of differences in themes. This is one of the blogs that we recently launched, Safety Vision. They're a client. I love them. They're fantastic. Um, they have one big, long sidebar that's got, it's pulling in their latest Flickr, their latest Vimeo, their categories, this is their blog role. Um, this is a recent post, and then they've got a similar thing where they have just a snippet of each one. So you have to click through to see uh, the, the next post. And they've also got this thing at the top that scrolls, 
and it rotates through and shows each one for you know, a couple of seconds. So those are some different themes. Uh, so the next question is kind of, you know, how do I, where do I find themes? How do I know which one works? There are a lot of resources for WordPress themes. A lot of them are paid. Um, a lot of them are free. And typically, if you have to pay for a WordPress theme, it's going to be really inexpensive, like, you know, $40 or something. Like, not, not, you're not paying like, tons and tons of money for the theme itself. To, to customize it, sometimes, um, like, for our clients, we'll customize themes for them. And that's, that's separate from the theme itself. But the actual theme is usually pretty, pretty basic, um, easy to find. So here are some resources that I put up, up there in case you're looking. Um, WordPress.org is, is a big one. Theme Forest and Woo themes, or those are mostly paid themes. But I'm going to show you WordPress.org right now because it's a really good place. So here we go. WordPress.org. So WordPress.org, this is the official WordPress site. If you hit extend, you're going to see this themes directory right here. So it's got featured themes, most popular. Uh, it's got, you know, there are 994, almost 1,000 that you can look through. So if you want to, you could look through every single one, but probably you're not going to. Um, a cool thing that they've got are tags. So if I click on this guy, he's got custom header, threaded comments, translation ready. These are all features of this theme. Like, white. Like say you want one that's a white background, you can click on white and you're going to get all the themes that are tagged with white. So this is really helpful if say um, I did a WordPress site for an organization and their colors were um, maroon and so they wanted something that was already maroon and so we went and looked for those. Um, if you wanted, like for mine, I knew I wanted a double, that double sidebar because I wanted to show everything ever that I possibly could and so I, um, I looked for one with a, with a double sidebar. So that's a good way to search for themes. Also, in the actual dashboard itself, under appearance, if you have add new, if you click add new themes, it gives you this, which is what the screenshot on the on the PowerPoint, that we, excuse me, that we just saw. And this you can filter by some of the most popular tags. So if you say, I know I want two columns in the left sidebar, and it's, or, and I know I want it for photo blogging, you can hit find themes. And it will spit you out. Oh, no themes. We'll just look at photo blocking. <laughs> so these are themes that are specifically created for photo blocking. This one's really cool, this monotone one. I'll hit preview. Uh, you upload a picture and it takes, it automatically takes a color out of the picture and makes the background color match that. So it changes with each one. So that's pretty cool, I think. I've seen this, this being used. A lot, and it's pretty neat. Um, this also shows you the elements, what the heading one looks like, what the heading two looks like, and that kind of thing. So that's themes. Um, once you find a theme, you can go into editor and edit it. If you if you know CSS and PHP, you can, you can edit things in here. Um, a lot of it is. You know, for instance, this is the 404 template, so if someone can't find the 404 page, this is what it's going to show, error 404 not found. Um, if you uh, are, can edit these things, this is, this is where they go. Um, some of it is, is WordPress specific and takes some learning, and there are a lot of resources on WordPress.org. This docs right here is documentation, and there's just tons and tons <coughs> and tons of documentation. Um, for me, I don't edit my theme a lot because, like I said, I'm kind of afraid to. So, but you know, in the event that you're, you're willing to do that, this is how you do it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is plugins. Any questions on the themes? Are we good? Okay. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint, make sure I got everything. So, where do I find themes? <clears throat> oh, so customizing the theme. I will skip this. <laughs> Widgets, WordPress uses what it, called, what it calls widgets. So on that sidebar of mine, all those different things that I have included, each of those are a widget. It's essentially designed to provide a simple way to arrange everything in your sidebar without doing coding. You're sort of dragging and dropping what it calls widgets. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to go into appearance. And the second one is widget.
So this guy's got one sidebar, and you can see these are the widgets that I've already dragged in there. So we have text, categories, links, recent posts, and then text again. Um, so categories and links are pretty self-explanatory. It's going to show all the categories, show all the links, show all the recent posts. Text is something that is one of the most flexible widget you can put. Um, our top one is about. So to edit one of these guys, we're going to click the down arrow. And you can see I can change the title. I can put whatever I want to in here. This is just our little about blurb. And I'm going to flip over and show you what it looks like on the blog itself. So if we go to the home page, here's our little blurb. And then the bottom one you'll notice is a picture. So that's also a text block. But in this one, I've got a link and a badge. This is to the, the ShippleCon conference that we're uh, having in October, and I actually got this from the website. So this is something, for instance, like um, if you had a Facebook badge or a Flickr badge and it spit out code and it said copy and paste this and put it into your sidebar, then here, so we're going to click grab the badge. And so I just took one of these, copy and paste me. So we've got the regular one, maybe. Um, if we wanted to change it to the I'm attending one, we can just copy this guy and go, I lost my window. Okay, over here and then paste it and hit save and it will update. Save. Okay, save. So close. Go back to our home page. Reload. And we've got the I'm attending. So that's where that came from. This is also an example of where if you wanted to um, upload an image to the media library and then include it in here. You can just uh, include it in one of these this image widgets. We can do things, so with widgets, like I said, you can drag them around. Um, once I drag it in, it's going to ask me to, uh, for options, what I want to do with it. Uh, most of them you can only have one of, like you can only have one category, list of all the categories. You can only have one list of all the links, but like, for instance, text, you can do as, you know, as many as you want to. We can have a, we'll go ahead and list, have a tag cloud of all of our tags, and hit save. So now if we reload it, we have our three little tags. <laughs> We've only used one, so they're all very small. So that's widgets. Um, widgets are very nice because, um, like I said, any, you can update them without having to go into the code. Back in the, you know, back in the day before widgets, you had to, uh, if I wanted to add this, I would have had to go into the scary code and copy and paste it and hope I put it in the right place. Uh, you know. But widgets are much easier to do. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about are plugins. Plugins are allow you to extend WordPress. So instead of just the basics of what is included, you can you can do essentially anything. Um, here's our WordPress.org link for where to find plugins. Um, usually it just takes a, a little searching. For instance, if you're looking for uh, WordPress.org. So we're going to click on extend and then plugins. These have tags as well. You can see intense debate made it up there. We've talked about that already. Um, get recent comments. If, you know, say I want something with images, I'll just click on images and kind of see. This is a, like this one is a sidebar widget where you can text pictures and it will automatically add it to the sidebar. So if you're traveling a lot and you wanted something like that, that could be very cool. If you want to be able to rate comments, if you want to add um, uh, one that plays nice with Flickr, there are all kinds of, pretty much anything you can imagine, someone's probably made a widget for it. So the way to find good plugins to make sure that you, you know, you're using a plugin that, that is probably going to work, um, like I said, it's open source, so anybody can make a plugin. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that all of them are um, exactly exactly what you need. So uh, use WordPress approved plugins. If you find a plugin by Googling, search for it in that plugins directory as well, just to make sure it's WordPress approved. It's been um, WordPress will rate it and make sure that it's okay. So uh, that's something that you want to do. Look to see when it was last updated. Anything more than about six months ago, you may be wary of. If it's more than a year ago, then I wouldn't use it just because WordPress keeps updating so often that you don't want to use something that uh, is, is not going to work. 
Um, also on there, there's a compatible up to, and make sure it's got the latest version of WordPress. We're at uh, 2.8.4, so you want to look for that. Um, look at ratings and reviews, and then uh, some of it is just trial and error. So if you click, we're going to find a Twitter plugin. So look for Twitter. This is Twitter tools. I've used Twitter tools um, before. So the question is, how often does WordPress refresh their directory? Do you mean the plugins directory? The plugin, okay, the plugin directory, um, it's updated really frequently um, when people, people can submit plugins and WordPress has to approve them. And so there's, um, they're, they're constantly approving things and um, that people can update versions. So like this guy, you can see this is version 2.0. So they um, have updated it recently and they will uh, update, they'll, they'll upload their, their version. So it's got a date on it of when the last time. So this one was updated uh, 2009-83, so back in August. So um, pretty much it's in it's pretty close to real time. There's a like I said there's a little bit of a lag time for uh, WordPress approving things, but this gets updated really, really frequently. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you want to look at this last updated, you want to look up the compatible up to see what others are saying. Um, just sort of get an idea for which one, uh, for whether it looks like it's going to fit your needs. And hopefully, here's some plugins that I like. Um, like I said, a lot of it's trial and error. And so um, here are my <laughs> recommended ones that I, I like. Uh, Google Analytics. This is a really good, great plugin for if you're using Google Analytics to insert the code into your site so you don't have to go messing in the code to, um, to update that. Uh, the all-in-one SEO pack is a really good one. The way this works is it's on each blog post you can, it's got the meta information like the keywords and the description and everything um, within that add post uh, form. So it's part of it. So you can, you can add keywords uh, specifically for each post. Uh, sociable is what if you were looking when we were adding posts, we've got those little icons, share to Twitter, share to Facebook, share to Flickr. That's the one that we've got on our training blog. Um, and I'll show you how that works in a, in a second because I think that's very cool. Um, Twitter tools for integrating, pulling your Twitter, Twitter feed, and then test debate. So that sociable plugin, we're going to go to plugins. Um, another thing about plugins is they all kind of work a little bit differently. So um, we've got so some of them. They're they're setting some of them. You can. Um, you, you have to get to the settings, like this one is just settings and sociable and some of them you may have to, it'll put it in a weird place and you have to kind of find it, but typically the settings are going to be under settings. So this is that sociable plugin. Um, this is similar to like a share this where um, you can, people can click and share the blog post. Typically on those share this options, they've got everything under the sun, every single social media thing that you could ever possibly imagine. And a lot of times for me, it's overwhelming. So I like this guy because you can decide what you want. So say I want curtsy and I want these things and I want, you know, email, but no, I don't really want email. I don't, you know, I want RSS. I want to, uh, you can pick what you want to be able to share to. So some of these, I've, you know, I've never heard of, I've never used, and I use a lot of social media. And so I figure um, we can just stick with the, the, the big guys. So you can also drag these around and put them in whatever order that you want. So we'll put these. And the gray ones aren't going to show up even if they're between blue guys. So uh, we'll save changes and we'll reorder. So this is a really cool plugin. Like I said, this is not built into WordPress, but it's something that's it's pretty easy to use. So now when we go to a page, you can see our little icons and they're in the order that we specify them. So that's plugins. Oh, here's how to install a plugin. Um, so once you find your plugin in the WordPress directory, there's going to be a download button, a big orange button. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we've got our Twitter tools. We're going to hit download. It's going to save the file. It'll be a zip file. And then to add it to your site, you go to the site. We're going to go back to plugins. And then there's this little add new guide. So from here, this is you can also search here um, from the add new. We've got popular tags for each of the different um, 
plugins. And actually, if you choose a plugin from here, it will install it for you. You don't have to download it. It will just automatically go. You press a button. But since we downloaded it from another page, we're going to click Upload, um, Browse, and choose our guy. If I can find him on my desktop, there he is. And then hit Install Now. And then it's going to prompt you to activate the plugin. So it's pretty easy. Like I said, um, it's going to make me update the settings before it's giving me a big red. It's not going to work until you update your settings. Um, it, uh, back in the old days, you had to use FTP and drag things over and, and all that. But, but now it's much easier to do. And like I said, if you, if you hit Add New from here, and let's say we want one that does, you know, we'll look for a Flickr one. Here's a Flickr one. Um, let's say we want simple Flickr photos. We can just hit install right from here. And activate it. And it's still mad at me about this guy. So that's plugins. Any questions on that so far? Okay. Um, plugins are fantastic. Like I said, they get they get updated all the time. If you Pretty much if you can think of it, if you wish there was a way to do it, somebody probably has thought of it as well. So um, the last couple things we're going to talk about, users. You can add additional users to your blog and give them various permissions. Um, here are the roles that you can give people that are, that are built into WordPress. Um, for instance, we have a client who we just launched a corporate blog for them, and they have six people from six different departments that are uploading blog posts, but there's one person who actually hits publish. So everybody else can, can create posts, but they um, there's one person who's kind of in charge of the flow and make sure that nobody posts, you know, two similar things or they're all on the same day or that they're, you know, they're kind of new bloggers. And so, you know, making sure that everything makes sense and is flowing and is not, you know, it's, they're, they're good posts. And so the built-in roles administrator, that's what, what the admin is, it's what you've been logging in as, you can do anything, you can, you know, what I would say is you can take down the site if you, you know, on, whether on purpose or an accident, you can, you can do that. Um, an editor can publish posts and edit other people's content, but they can't do things like edit the theme or install plugins or things like that. An author can publish posts, but they can't touch other people's things, so they can, they can create content, they can publish their own content, but they can't, they can't mess with other people's stuff. Um, and then contributors, that's the role I was talking about, where they can create posts, but they can't actually publish. So to give you an example, if I'm logged in as a contributor on the blog, and I created another role for myself so I could show you this, um, and you can see that my sidebar, if I'm logged in as a contributor, it's got a lot less stuff on it. I've got a lot less. I can read the comments, but I can't edit them. I can look at my own profile, but I can't add other people. Um, and then when I make a post, I can only submit it for review. I can't actually hit the publish button. So what that does is when I hit submit for review, then and the admin sees uh, this post as what's called pending, and then they have to go in and actually hit publish on it. So that, that's a little bit about users. Um, you can add as many users as you want to to the blog, to your blog, depending on how many people are contributing. So now we're down to tools, and this is just some, these are some extra WordPress things that are available, and um, these are things that are very cool that you may, you may or may not use, it just depends on, on your work style. So here's a big long list of all of them, but I'm going to flip over to the site because I think they're easier to see over here. I'm going to make this plugin, uh, I'm going to deactivate this guy so that he stops yelling at us. So to deactivate a plugin, if you want to deactivate it instead of, um, using it. Oh, it is deactivated. It is deactivated. Um, if you click on, so we've got active over here. If you want to deactivate a plugin, you can do it. And it, well, what it does is it makes it, it doesn't go away. It still exists. It just um, isn't on your site. So we're actually going to delete him. And then you can delete it from here. So it's always a good idea to deactivate things instead of deleting them right away, just, just in case. Okay. So we're going to go to tools. See if our, yes, our bug went away. It's not bad anymore. So um, Turbo is something that it uses uh, Google Gears. I don't, I don't particularly use this. This Press this widget. It's very cool. Um, essentially what you do, you can drag this guy up into your bookmark table, uh, bookmark tab. So, I'm gonna, so I dragged it up here. We've got our press this. 
So then if you're on another blog, so say you're on the Shipple blog, and you highlight something on the blog, and you want to write a post about it, you can highlight this and then hit the press this button. And what it will do is it will go in, it will log me in, it copied everything that I copied, that I highlighted, you see it in here, gave me the source, and added a title for me. It's going to, by default, um, put it in the default category. It's got, we can add tags to it, and we can create a post around any content on the web. So that's kind of a cool, we'll save drafts, so we can see what that looks like. So that's, that's pretty cool um, to have in your browser. Just to, um, you know, I want to write a post about this as you're, as you're surfing through. Or for me, a lot of times I'll do, I'll save things as a draft and then go back to them later. So, so I don't forget, I'll use that little press this guy. Um, the other thing under tools is that you can import from another blog. So here are all the other kinds of blogs that WordPress supports. So if you have a blogger blog and you want to you want to switch to a WordPress blog, all you have to do is log into your account and it will automatically pull everything over. Oh, yeah, I can show you that again. So the question is show me that again. So what we did, we'll back up to the very beginning. Um, tools, we got our press this guy down here. So what I'm going to do is drag, I dragged him up into the bar. So you can see there's that little blue arrow that shows me where he's going to go. That's, that's where I put him. So then I'm on any other, you know, site. We'll do another one. Let's scroll down here. And I highlighted something. Highlight. Okay, so we're all highlighted. What we want to, what we want to do. I'm not, I didn't copy it or anything. I just highlighted it. I, I think it's very cool that you don't even have to copy it. And then I'm going to hit the press this. And it pulls in what I highlighted. So it did all of this for me. This is the part that I highlighted. It pulled in the title of the blog. And then it pulled in the title of so this pulled in the, um, the title of the page that I was on. So this is a, this is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so back to here. Um, importing, uh, like I mentioned before, if you import anything from Blogger or from you know, LiveJournal or Google Type or whatever you were using before, um, it will import the photos as well. So that's kind of a cool thing. It will um, it it'll save them to your blog. It's not just you know linking out to old posts. So and you can also import a blog roll in the OPML format. So if you have like a, a, a list of bookmarks or something in that format, you can import them here using this as well. You can also export if you want to back up your blog or if you want to um, um, if you're using say a WordPress.com blog and you want to upgrade to a to one that's hosted on your own site, you can, you can do that. It, this is also where you can upgrade. You saw that big, red, scary, it was mad at us thing when we, when we uploaded that um, Twitter plugin. That's kind of what it does when it needs to update, upgrade. If it wants you to upgrade, it will make it very clear that that's what you need to do. Um, it's pretty easy. It's as simple as clicking a button and uh, letting it run a, run a quick script. Um, it will prompt you to back up your blog just in case. I haven't had any issues with it, but it's a, it's a good idea to, to back up your blog. Um, and like I said, it will prompt you to do that. And then uh, that's what it does when it needs you to upgrade. Or you can go down here. So that's tools. Um, the very last thing that I'm going to go over is settings. And uh, we're just going to run through them. Because now that we've gone over everything, I think that they're, they're pretty easy. So. General Texas Dog Workers blog is the name of our blog. It shows up here. It shows up depending on your theme. On this theme, it shows up at the top up here as well. A lot of themes that show up in the footer. So that's where you actually put the name of your blog. And then the tagline is similar. This guy, the tagline is up at the top. Um, the, your WordPress URL. So we got our URL. Your blog address URL. They can be different if you wanted your blog to be, you know, if you had a home page. And then your blog was like blog, like ours is blog.shipple.com and, and if say the rest of your site was was it on a different in a different place you can do that. Um, uh, the email address, so this is if anything happens on the blog, if somebody you know posts a comment or somebody registers for if you register someone for a new user or anything where it needs to email somebody, this is who it's gonna email. 
Um, you can make it so anyone can register. Some blogs have special features for subscribers. Um, we, don't, we don't have that on this example, but that's an option. The time zone, the day, what day of the week starts on, those are all in here. Writing the size of the post box, it's a 10 lines. And this is when we go to add a post. We have this little small box, this guy right here. So this is the size of this. So actually, I'm going to make that taller because I don't think it's very tall. I'm going to make it 50 and hit Save Changes. And then when I reload this, it will be a lot taller. Um, we can convert emoticons. We can um, the default post category. This is where I mentioned if uncategorized is checked here, then you won't be able to delete it. So um, if you're trying to delete a category and you can't, that's probably why. The default link category. This is a uh, remote publishing. We're not really using this in this example. You can also you can set these up. These posts via email. Um, these are additional features where you can, if you, if you have a mail server, that you can um, may email a post to and it will automatically post. Reading the front page displays the latest post, or you can have it display a static post. If, you know, for example, you wanted to start on an about page and then you had to click to go to a to a post. Um, Blog pages show at most 10. This is where, if, for instance, I clicked on the category page, it's going to show me the latest 10 posts about that category, or I can make it fewer. Um, depending on how long your posts are, a lot of times I like to keep this to 5. We'll actually change this to 5 because um, 10 can get to be a lot. Syndication feeds, this is on RSS feeds. It's going to, by default, show the most recent 10. 10 is a really good number for an RSS feed. Um, and then you can have it show either the full text or the summary. Some people like for the RSS feeds to show the summary, so people actually have to click through to read the whole thing. Uh, personally, I like full text. I think that you want them to read your content and not have to, to have another click, but uh, it's, that's just up to you. We'll save that guy. Okay. Discussion. These are our comment settings that we talked about earlier. Um, by default, we're going to allow pingbacks and trackback. The trackback is when another blog leaks to you. It will uh, notify you. It will show up kind of like a comment and say, you know, so-and-so link to you. It works really well from work, you know, WordPress to WordPress blogs. That's optional. Um, it's also, you can get spam trackbacks as well. Uh, WordPress is smart enough to catch them but uh, for the most part, but some people don't turn that on because they, they get more spam than they get real trackbacks. So uh, my recommendation would be to leave it on, and if it becomes an issue, then, then turn it off. Um, allow people to comment. So you can turn that off by default or have it on. This is our comment author must fill out their name and email. You can make them make it where they have to be registered. So for instance, I mentioned some blogs have special features if you uh, become a member of the blog. And some blogs require you to log in before you can even comment. We don't have that turned on. Um, you can automatically close comments on articles that are really old. You can set this for like a year. And if it's older than a year, no one can comment. Um, break comments into pages. Uh, this is where I would mention the email address, when it's going to email you, email me when anyone posts a comment. Maybe for me, I like that because I like to be pretty, you know, vigilant and see when people are posting. For some people, they'll just, they're just really good about checking it every day and they don't want to get emailed every time, so that's up to you. This comment is held in moderation. I would leave this check because this is where I mentioned WordPress is pretty smart and it knows when there's spam, but if there's ever a question, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold a comment in moderation. And you probably want it to email you about it just in case it's a real, you know, it's an actual comment that you don't want anyone to be, you, know, you don't want to overlook it and then that comment never gets published. So here's more moderation. An, an administrator must always approve the comment. That's an option that you have. We're actually going to turn this comment author must have a previously approved comment off because I want people to be able to comment. Um, and then this guy, hold a comment in the queue if it contains two or more links. So uh, that's a good thing because a lot of spammers will use, what they're trying to do is link you back to another site. So that's a good indication of a spammer. You can also put specific blacklisted, um, this, well, these are, you can put keywords in here that if, if it sees this, it will automatically hold it for moderation. You can put words in the blacklist box that it will automatically, you know, mark as spam and won't even bug you. With. Avatars, um, depending on how your blog 
uh, is set up, you can set it to show avatars or not. There are different kinds of av avatars. Um, this Gravatar is a system, it's a, a service by WordPress where you can have a profile and upload an image and all of that. So you can um, set it to where that's the default avatar. These guys, it will just generate a random one for each person and it's got Identicon and Wavatar. I don't know what that means. This monster will make everyone a monster. So um, that's up to you. <laughs> a lot of times we'll just turn them off because. Okay. Media, this is where we talked about the sizes of the images. You can specify what size you want. So for me, for the large size, I'm going to make it 500 because I know that my blog is only 500 pixels wide and I don't ever want to accidentally break it. Privacy, this is one um, I would like my blog to be visible to everyone including search engines or I would like to block search engines. So for our blog, it's a training blog. We don't really want Google to index it and think it's actually the Texas dog walker, so we had this turned off. Um, for your blog, you, you obviously went on, so if you feel like if you're you know, Googling yourself and your blog isn't showing up in search engines, this is the first place to check to make sure that this is correct. A lot of times for when blogs are in development, we'll turn it, we'll block the search engines because we don't want them to see it until it's ready, and then flip it. So here are permalink settings. We talked about that. Um, uh, my recommendation would be to pick one that has the name in it because Google likes words. Uh, this one's got a custom structure, and the way that we came up with that was if you click on this day and name has the most um, kind of uh, pieces to it. So it's got the year, the month, the day, and the post name. And I just took away everything but the post name. So um, miscellaneous. These are, this is where your uploads are going to go when you, when you upload things to the blog. I would keep that the same. And then as I mentioned, if you have extra plugins, you may have extra stuff hanging out in your settings bar that you have options of. So that is, let me check out everything. Uh, that's everything on the actual uh, dashboard. If there are any questions, let me know. I got uh, one more slide left on maintaining your blog. Oh, banners. So the question is about banners. How do you integrate them on your blog from a design perspective? So that depends on the that depends on the theme. So like this guy, we've got um, you talking about the, the top banner or like advertising banner. Oh, advertising banners. Um, typically, what we'll see is um, those going in the in the sidebar right here. I'm not sure if there's a specific plugin that handles that. Um, I haven't I haven't done a lot with that. Um, but we've got like this guy where this is um, it's just an image in the in the text widget. Um, I would imagine that there are let's see if we can find a plugin that handles like rotating, you know, where if you had a couple of different sponsors, it would randomly show one. Let's see. So there are a whole bunch of advertising. There's an advertising manager one where it will, oh, this is different. This is Google Assets. Yeah, some of these have very specific purposes as far as it depends on how you do your advertising program. I mean, because you could do it as manually as updating the, you know, going to the going to the media library and up, updating all your images and then swapping them out. Or um, you could use something like one of these plugins and have it uh, automatically update for you. Um, I have to admit, I am not very well versed in advertising on the blog. So um, I'm there, like I said, there are a whole lot of plugins. So I would, I would say, you know, going through and seeing if there's someone who's doing something similar to what you would, would need it for and uh, kind of going from there would be where to start on that guy. So 
So the last slide that I have is maintaining your blog. These are important things to do after launch. We've talked about a lot of them, but I just want to put them on a slide. Um, post. A lot of times uh, we see people get very excited and they have blogs and they don't post very often. And uh, that can be having a sad blog can be worse than having no blog at all. So uh, it's up to you what pace is right for you. Typically, once a week is good. If you um, uh, if if you're not going to post as often as that, then just be careful not to post. You know, like I said, not to sit down and lock yourself in your office and post five blog posts and post them all at once. You want to kind of spread them out so that you have content all fresh content all the time. Monitor your comments. Uh, respond to comments on your blog. If you get a comment, um, even if you just say thanks, hey. You know, thanks, thanks for, for reading. That's something people really appreciate that. Commenting on other people's blogs is, is a good idea as well. That can help um, build community and drive people back to your blog. And uh, it's good for, we call link love or, you know, sharing a good karma of the internet. Um, another thing on monitoring comments, keeping those emails coming to you and not, um, some people don't like the emails coming. But I, for me, like I said, it's harder for me to make sure I check every day than just have an email come and shoot in my email box when somebody comments. Uh, watch the stats. If you're using Google Analytics, keep an eye on it. You know, take a look at the keywords, figure out what people are reading, what people find interesting. If you have one post that has a huge spike and a ton of people read it, then um, figure out why. Is it because of the content? Is it because you got linked from somewhere? Uh, that's, that's a good thing. Tweak. Check your static content to make sure it's up to date. About pages can get stale sometimes, so um, make sure that, that that's getting updated. Look for new plugins and features. Like I said, they get updated a lot, and so kind of be, be aware, aware of that, that there are new things out there all the time. And then we talked about upgrading a little bit. Um, make sure that if you see an update to the system or to a plugin to update as soon as possible because a lot of times when WordPress announces an update then uh, spare orders know that there was something you know there's something they can exploit in the older version so if you're feeling extra vigilant you can you can follow the WordPress development blog and keep that in your RSS reader and then that will alert you anytime that they're going to do an update and um, as long as you do it it's kind of as, as soon as you see it then, then um, that's a good thing to do. So that's my. Any questions? Thanks for asking questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, tips on generating traffic to your blog. Um, commenting on other people's uh, posts is a, is a really good thing, and um, building up a kind of friendship with other bloggers is, is a good thing. A lot of bloggers understand that they, they're in the same boat you are, and so they want to they reach out and spread the love too. Um, if it's a corporate blog or if it's something that has to do with, um, you know, your, your company, putting in your email signature is always good. People are always curious. At Shipple, we put them on our business cards. We've got um, the blog on our business cards. Um, and a lot of times just letting people know that you have one, you know, sending out an email and saying, hey, I, I have this blog, uh, uh, check it out. Those are, those are good things as well. Um, Google Analytics does track blog traffic. It will, what, what you do is you can set up either a separate Google Analytics account for your blog specifically, um, and then um, what it will do is the hard thing, a lot of reasons why people have those, I mentioned the difference between having the whole entire blog post on your homepage versus just having the excerpt, is if you have an excerpt, then somebody actually has to click and go to the page itself. Or like on my blog, I've got the whole thing. So you could read my whole blog post and never leave the home page. So you have to keep that into account. So on my Google Analytics, it looks like my home page gets all the traffic because essentially it does because it's being updated all the time. And uh, there's no, there's not a lot of need for somebody to click through to read the newest stuff. And so uh, that's why a lot of times people will include those excerpts just so that for tracking reasons. Um, that's just up to you. Google, um, it will track it just like a regular site where each blog post will count as a page, each category page will count as a page, and even though like your home page, even though your content's updating all the time, it still counts as the, its own page. Any more? No problem. I'm really excited that you came and asked lots of questions. So uh, we'll see you at the conference again. My name's Caitlin. Here's my email address, my Twitter account. If you have any questions, let me know. Um,
I can talk about WordPress all day, so <laughs> if anything comes up, let me know. And I'll send these slides up when I get back to my desk this afternoon. Cool. Well, have a good afternoon, and thanks for coming.